North Dakota, Mississippi, Saskatchewan, home to hundreds of thousands of cows. See, they're all looking at us now. They know there's somebody different. And a few bold ranchers who got the guts to change when nature forced their hand. When my wife and I went through the four years of crop failure, you know, I'm sure I was not a pleasant man to be around in that it was extremely high stress. We got into financial problems and, and couldn't make payments and the bank figured we should uh, sell the land and keep doing what we were doing with the big machinery with less land while we dug a hole faster. But my wife and I will tell you the best thing that could have happened to us because what it was, it forced us to start looking at the soil. Since the 1800s, letting cattle roam freely for weeks and months was second nature. Well, this will be a very typical conventionally grazed situation in where they're allowed to just keep returning back to the exact same area day after day to graze. But then you start getting cows eating the same plant all the time, and then they go after the best ones, and that weakens the root system on those, so the poor plants take over. So we ended up with poor and poor pasture every year. With their pastures dying, Neil's wife insisted he take a class from someone teaching a new way to graze. I soon found out it was easier to go along and argue with her, so I went for the one day, but I didn't want to be there. So from 98 to 2004, I tried to prove him wrong. And I didn't have much luck. Everything started turning around when I started doing things different. I got different results. Results produced by grazing that regenerates the soil. Equal parts art and science with a splash of history. Our prairie soils were formed by large herds of bison, elk. They would move, they'd graze an area and keep moving. And they might not return to that area for a year, maybe two years. To mimic this herd migration, they break up their ranches into small areas called paddocks. I'm going out to set up a temporary fence to make a small paddock of one acre or less. So I hang a bat latch on the permanent post and 12 feet away, I found a temporary post and string my wire across and then I come back and put my step-in pigtails in. And then I go put electricity in the fence and that's it. I can put one up and down a quarter of a mile in 18 minutes. I'll put anywhere from, oh, 800 to 1,000 head on an acre or half an acre. The cattle readily move in to a new paddock because they always know they're going to get a fresh bite of grass. And what happens is that at higher stock densities, these cattle feel like things are a little competitive. They figure if I don't get it, my neighbor's going to get it. So they go ahead and grab and bite and grab and bite. In two to two and a half hours, it'll be either eaten or trapped on the ground. We graze it and then we get the heck off of it. It's ate off pretty good. You'll see some places are a bit shorter than others. The magic is how long to stay off. This is an 80 day recovery on this one right now. And that's where I think I need to be instead of anything less. For several decades, we sort of pushed monocultures in pastures. You know, plant just Bermuda grass or just fescue. Why? Because it was easy. You were managing for one species. You knew how to fertilize a monoculture. But when you manage a polyculture, a cocktail mix, then that's something that for today's generation is a little foreign. I'll take you down and show you that cocktail mix that I threw in so we get a picture of it before the cows eat it. This here is 
black medic. It's a legume and it puts down nitrogen. This species right here is called hairy vetch. Very high in protein. It'll be over 30% protein. And I got sunflowers, corn. This plant here is called phacelia. That flower attracts the pollinators and we want the pollinators in our system. In many areas of the U.S. and in many areas globally, we're seeing a dearth of pollinator insects. And we have found that if we provide the habitat for pollinators, they will return. Okay, these are sow thistles, they're a weed. But if you eat them when they're just flowering or in the bud, early bud stage, they're higher protein than what the alfalfa is. My philosophy now is this. If livestock eat it, and it provides nutrition to those livestock, it's not a weed, it's a forage. Some guys might get the spray can out. They want to spray every weed there is. And the truth is, if I went in here and sprayed a herbicide to take care of these small amount of weeds that we have, I would also be taking care of my red clover, white clover, and all my other legumes in there and getting rid of those. And we're saving money. You know, we're not having to buy a herbicide. We're not having to employ machinery, you know, tractors and equipment to put it out as well. Why do I want to go out and spend thousands upon thousands of dollars every year on synthetic fertilizer when I can grow these crops for just the cost of the seed? They'll make the nitrogen for me, and then my livestock will come around and eat these plants, convert it to dollars for me to sell. So I'm getting all my fertilizer basically for a profit because I'm making money off of these crops. You know, these plants are just almost going nuts, so to speak, with photosynthetic activity once we take the cattle off. And that is allowing these plants as they're rapidly regrowing to capture carbon out of the air, you know, and put it back into the soil. Because of overgrazing, overuse of chemicals, and erosion, the amount of carbon in our soils is dangerously low. I think our whole world revolves around the carbon in the soil because it's those carbon molecules that feed soil life. And it's those microorganisms that feed all the plants, that nourish all the animals, that feed civilization. Many have thought restoring large amounts of carbon to soil would take centuries. These folks only need a decade, and maybe less. Last month we did soil tests on our operation and what we found is that we've over tripled the amount of organic matter, in other words, the amount of carbon stored in our soils. Carbon-rich soils soak up heavy rainfall. Carbon-depleted soils don't. When there was quite a bit of rain, the water would run down the hill and there would be water laying in the bottom of that slough. And now I get better water infiltration. That doesn't happen to me anymore. In 1993, we could only infiltrate one half inch of rainfall per hour. Now we can infiltrate over eight inches of rainfall per hour. Think of the ramifications of that. I tell people it's not how much moisture and rainfall you get, it's how much can your soils hold. Because carbon rich soils hold on to water, they help the ranchers weather droughts. This was seeded eight weeks ago and it's only seen 38 one hundredths an inch of rainfall. Yet look how healthy it is. The way that we graze these cattle and run these cattle, and with the health of the soil and the health of the plants that they're feeding on, they stay healthy. They don't get sick, they don't need to be treated. I used to carry a crossbow, three big bottles of medicine for treating them. And now out of the 850 head here, I've only treated uh, less than 20 this year. This particular farm here is about a thousand acres in size. And in terms of day-to-day -day activity, building paddocks for the week, moving cattle, you're looking at the person that does that on a day-to-day -day basis. I've got more spare time on my hands than I know what to do with. I do a lot of thinking of how to do all these things easier. If I was to start this when I was your age, you know what would have happened? I would have had 15 kids by now because I spend so much time in the house. 
you know, this is always the best part of my day. I guess one of the reasons I'm content is because you clearly see they're content. You know, they're happy. We're still here after 10 or 15 years, and uh, we wouldn't have been if, if we had kept doing what we were. I'd have been flipping hamburgers somewhere. It's extremely low stress because we're working with nature instead of against her. My mother didn't think much of it when I first started it. She was pretty upset seeing all the weeds. Now she's bra bragging to her friends about what I'm doing.